registering as a sex offender. Toledo police did some digging thanks to that tip, and they're now charging him with murder and aggravated burglary. New at 6, traffic deaths from drivers running red lights are at an all-time high. AAA released new numbers today. That data shows more than 200 people died in Ohio over a 10-year span. Another former Lackawanna County prison guard accused of sexually assaulting female inmates has been found not guilty. We begin with breaking news tonight from the Bloomsburg Fair. This helicopter, used for giving rides at the fair, crashed into the parking lot with people on board. Fox 56's Jack Reinhardt is live at the fairgrounds now. Jack, nobody, though, was seriously hurt. One person today was trapped under their car after crashing it in Northumberland County. Take a look at these pictures. This is on Bottle Drive in Shamrock Mills. The Elysburg Fire Department says it took about an hour to get the driver out from under the car. You can see it's in pretty bad shape. Fire officials say the driver refused treatment but should be okay. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. We are live at Fifth Third Field tonight, and things are getting pretty exciting. The Mud Hens just put a couple of runs on the board. We're in the bottom of the fifth, and it's kind of chilly out here. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is apologizing tonight after a photo surfaced of him wearing brown face back in 2001. Time magazine published this picture of the then 29-year-old wearing a turban and robe. The prime minister says he was dressing up for an Arabian Nights-themed party where he put makeup on his face and hands. We have adorable Fiona. Just look at the coloring on this dog. So pretty. Can you tell us a little bit about Fiona? The Fiona was a... <laughs> before I, like, fall? <laughs> yeah, before she trips you. But a new study says there are actually some screens that are worse than others. Fox 56's Victoria Halicard tells us how they can impact your child's grades. A Pennsylvania businessman says a local school district turned down his offer to pay off thousands of dollars in lunch money debt. That is definitely not football weather, but those people going out tonight going to have to deal with the rain. And like you said, this storm has a lot of lightning with it, so those games may be delayed or canceled. If the Department of Corrections comes out and makes that announcement, do we know how soon it would close? Curtis Stone will serve four years of probation and 400 hours of community service. He'll also have to pay a $4,000 fine. Stone pleaded guilty in federal court back in April to stealing guns from the property room that he had marked destroyed. One of those guns was recovered during a traffic stop, which led police to look into the records more closely. Toledo's police chief reacted to the sentence, saying he respects the court, but the sentence was surprisingly lenient. I hope Mr. Stone realizes the harm he has done and the trust he has lost. We start off with breaking news tonight out of Toledo. The woman accused of planning to blow up a Toledo bar pleaded guilty to terrorism charges. 24-year-old Elizabeth LaCron conspired with Vincent Armstrong, who pleaded guilty earlier this month. Newly released video shows what happened inside a Pittsburgh gas station where two male employees allegedly beat two women. The district attorney is standing firm on charging them with simple assault as protesters demand stronger charges. We've been talking about Tropical Storm Dorian, and I actually do have plans to travel to South Florida this weekend right as that storm is coming in. And it just makes me realize how much I take for granted our calm forecasts here. Adoption fees for puppies are $329, but that includes spay and neuter, vaccines, heartworm, and flea treatments. All dogs over six months are $129. If we could just sit here and look at that video all day, I think we'd all be a little bit happier. We have a homestay program where if you want to try adopting a dog, you can do it for seven days, and then if everything goes well, you can try it for another seven days. So it is a big commitment when you're thinking about adding somebody to your family forever. So come on down. Give it a shot. You really don't have anything to lose. You have a whole lot of love to gain. We're going to send it back to you. Penn State Hazleton celebrated the grand opening of the Launch Box. It's a free service for students as well as those in the area acting as an incubator. People can learn from guest speakers, use those facilities, or consult with others, all free of charge. And there's actually a generation that wasn't taught cursive, and for them, it's a reality. Starting this fall, elementary teachers will once again have the materials to teach cursive. Ohio lawmakers approved that change back in December, nearly a decade after it took back seat to keyboarding. Stop at the top for that A. When you come back around, watch that V. It's like a roller coaster that has a hook on it. Hook right into your Y. Tanya Stahl has been with Toledo Public Schools for 18 years. I remember when I learned as a child and how um, seeing cursive looked like scribbles to me. And then as I was learning, it was like this magical language that just kind of appeared on the board. 
and I tell them that story, and then I have lots of them who are like, oh, oh, oh that happened to me too, and we have this connection, and I think that's kind of neat for them too. She has consistently taught it to her third grade students at Beverly Elementary. Looking beautiful. So even when it wasn't directed by the state for us to teach cursive, I kept doing it with my classes, so every year I have started at the beginning of the year um, teaching cursive, and I have a lot of parents who thank me for doing that because it's important, um, and the kids seem to really love it. Is it hard? No. no. We get to learn something new, and it's like fun, and it's really, and it's like a fun way to write your words, because I think print is a little harder than cursive. The problem is, is that some of them, we have so many standards that we have to cover that a lot of the teachers feel like they just don't have the time to fit everything in. And it is a juggling act. Mm -hmm. um, so even for me at the beginning of the year, we're teaching procedures, we're teaching, um, you know, beginning reading skills and those kinds of things. And then I'm trying to also do cursive too. But for me, it's important, so we find a way. Now, that way will be clearer. House Bill 58 mandates the Department of Education include instructional materials for cursive in the English language arts model curriculum put your name in cursive first and last up at the top. We now will begin uh, teaching uh, cursive starting with our kindergarten kids in terms of learning those fundamentals up through grade five where uh, they are to be proficient at it. The Ohio Department of Education is supposed to come out in July uh, with curriculum. Those resources will come in handy for Stahl who has been making copies of old materials for years. I think it would be good for the kids to actually have like a handwriting book that they could you know use. Um, Right now I do a lot of modeling on my projector um, on the board and then I just give them some lined paper and they're sort of like doing the same strokes and things as me on my lined paper. As for the missed generation? So it's been enough years that we're seeing some of our older students who can't write with it and they can't read it either, which is a real shame. So if you have questions or concerns about maybe your student who wasn't taught cursive, you can contact your local school. The principal or the counselors can get you the tools you need, but the focus moving forward is going to be on K through five. And tomorrow night, I'm actually putting people's penmanship to the test. I wanted to see how much people actually use cursive. I use it all the Never. time. Well, it seems like my grandma, <laughs> like I, when I'm writing, I'll sometimes do like in a between mix. a mix of yeah. cursive and what is it called? Normal Print. writing? Print. Yes. Well, my grandma, like every time she leaves me a note that she's going out or doing something, it's always in cursive. And I noticed that that, like that her generation does that as well. It's always in Well, and that cursive. is one of the things that we're going to address. We're going to talk to a high school teacher as well about mm -hmm. what we're missing out on. Historical documents are all written in cursive. Yeah. And they're like, what, what word is this? Yeah. It's interesting.